Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and today I'm going to look at the latest version of EDIUS that's come out, which is EDIUS 11.4. Came out just as I was going on holiday, so I'm a little bit late, but here I am looking at what's new. Now, the most obvious thing is the bin. The bin has been redesigned to be just like the bin was in EDIUS 10, 9, 8, and so on. So when EDIUS 11 came out, they did redesign the bin. That meant a few things were missing. Some of these icons were missing. Eddy got steadily better as it went along. And now they have just redesigned it to match what was there before. Because they were slowly adding in functions, but there were still things missing. Well, now they put everything back. So you have all these icons along the top where you can do things like drop clips on the timeline and get to the tools, all sorts of things like that. If you want to bring in some clips, grab some clips from Explorer and drop them in. You can now drag them into here or here. So pop them in there and they'll load up. And it all loads up a lot quicker. So at IBC recently, they said that they were redoing EDIUS and it's going to be the fastest EDIUS ever. This is the faster version. They've changed a lot of stuff about the bin, so it is a lot faster to use. And it's pretty much like it was using the bin in the old days. I can say they had got to a stage where it's working pretty well. Now they've changed it so it works the same as it used to and all the stuff that was in there like the timeline reference count timeline reference count here now shows you the number of times it's actually used on the timeline whereas in the previous edius 11 bin it just showed you a tick lots of little things like that so great it's back to how it was they have kept the properties panel so the properties panel you click on that and you can see properties of a clip and suppose i wanted to say put a real name on these things here i can come in here and i can put a real name on them that means something and they all get the same real name, but you can also now change it in here. I want to change the name of a clip, I can change it there. I want to add in, say the real name, come in here, and I can change it in here and I can select everything here. So works the same as the bin does before and is faster, which is great. That for me is a big change. Like I say, the bin when it first came out in EDIUS 11 was a bit dodgy and it got better and better and better. It was getting very usable. It's just nice they've gone back and changed it to how it was before, although they have kept this properties thing. One thing to bear in mind about the new bin is the fact that the search bin has changed. So inside of the original version of EDIUS 11, you'd click on a thing here and you'd set up a search. Now we've gone back to the way the search bin worked before. So you click on this, you click on whatever it is you want to do. So I typically send up one which has got a timeline sequence and close and it gives me a search bin which shows all the sequences. Again, that's how it's worked in every version of EDIUS up to EDIUS 11. And that's how it now works in 11.4. In previous versions, 11.3, etc., they had a different search bin. Now, because they've gone back to the way they used to do it, a search bin set up in 11.3 or 2 or whatever won't work in 11.4. You'll get a message saying your search bin doesn't work, set it up again. Personally, I do prefer the way this one works, find it very easy to set up. So I don't have an issue with that. But if you do get that message, that's all that's happened. You set up a search bin in an earlier version of 11 and it doesn't work in 11.4. From now on, you'll be using this method. So that's kind of the biggest change, which is a biggie because it makes it work a lot better. They've also improved the time it takes to open projects. Lots of other things to actually make the whole thing work better in the background. There are also quite a few other things that have been added. Now, if you watch the video that came out at IBC where they said what was coming up in EDIUS, uh, they said one of the things that it would have in there is a way of making subtitles using AI inside of EDIUS. That hasn't made it into this version. That's going to be another one. You can still do it by the BAT server, which is what I use all the time anyway. But the thing they were specifically talking about at IBC for subtitles, that's going to be in another version of 11. It's not in this one. But what they have done is a lot of other stuff. So for example, let me take a clip. So these are clips of the holiday that I was just on, random clips of monkeys and the like. And you can put markers onto the clips, obviously. We've always been able to do that. So let's put a marker in there, another marker in there, another marker in there. And let's put a comment of, say, monkey in that one. You could do markers before, no problem at all. What is new is you have this find option here. So if I come up to find and put in monkey, it finds the markers that have the word monkey in. So it's a nice way of searching through markers. And I have found ways of getting EDIUS using the BAT server to transcribe a nice long clip and put in the comments here, all the lines that are said, which I've done through the BAT server. And then when I add them as markers, I could search through those. So I could actually have a transcript which I could search through. Again, when the, the EDIUS native feature to add subtitles in, you'll probably be able to do that as well. But yeah, that's nice. 
being able to search markers useful especially if you have an awful lot of markers another one is the auto color corrector so if we come into the auto color corrector which was there in previous versions of edius obviously it takes the thing and it goes through and just works out some settings based on the frame that you're on at the moment but if you open it up they've also added in a saturation tick box here so it will now automatically adjust saturation obviously you can turn it off if you want to but that's a new thing the ability to change the saturation as well now i'm a big fiddler i fiddle a lot with my color correction and i wasn't sure how much i would use this auto color corrector i've actually found it very useful especially i've been doing some jobs where i've been taking say cine films getting them scanned and then upscaling them well I then need to go through and grade or color correct every shot to make it look a bit better. And actually I found the simplest way to do that is chop it all up into scenes and then use the auto color corrector on them and then afterwards go through and tweak them. But the auto color corrector gives me a good starting point very, very quickly. And I actually have been using it quite a lot. So for example, I would take all these clips, bang them on the timeline, take the auto color corrector and put it on all of them. So as I'm doing a lot, it takes a little bit of time to do it, but there we are, I've now got an auto color corrector on all of them and I can come through and tweak them individually just as before of course you can take the auto color corrector and you can say I want one that does the shadows a bit lower so I'll just turn that one down a bit and then you can save that as a preset and then you can apply that to all the clips it does a good job of getting a good look to a clip immediately that's without that's with probably want to tweak it afterwards but to do that I would come through and I'd use a primary color corrector I have even actually for a lot of my cine films I've got it to that kind of stage. I think, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I come through and some marking in and out point, add an adjustment clip on the top and thought, well, they all look fine, but I think they all could do with a little bit of something. I'll just put it on an adjustment clip and come through and fiddle with the primary color corrector on that to get a good look, which is then applied to all of them. But for me, the auto color corrector gets it in a good place at the start and then I can fiddle with it afterwards. Addition of saturation, really nice. Of course, you can go to them and just open up the auto color corrector and turn off the saturation and turn off the white balance and see what the results come out like. You can see there it's adjusting the amount of saturation in that quite a bit. Now of course the auto color corrector can do things like this. That looks completely overdone. Why on earth has the auto color corrector done that? Because at the start of the clip it's actually dark. So it set it for the start of the clip but halfway through I must have fiddled with the exposure and it's gone to that. So of course what I really need to do down here is open it up and reanalyze on the bright frame so it gets a decent look. Again, I just find that filter to be incredibly useful. Another small useful thing is to do with missing filters. Let's take that clip and I am going to put on a neat video and on the audio I'm gonna use this uh, limiter plugin which is a freebie that I use an awful lot. Now I'm gonna come out of Edius and I'm gonna get rid of those filters. I'm gonna take them out of Edius completely. And here you can see, oh right, it gives me the message that there's some effects missing. I mean, this was the same with every version of Edis. You know, you open up a project that's got some plugins which are no longer there, it tells you about it, but it never told you what they were. Now in Edis, you can see, if you look down here at the timeline, there is a gray bar on top of the video and on top of the audio, which tells me that that's got a missing effect on it. And the whole thing has gone negative, which also tells me it's got a missing effect. Those things were there before. What is new is this. It actually tells me what filter is missing. Now that seems like a small thing, but Gordon Bennett, that's useful. The only way we could do it previously was if you had the Edius power tools, you could open that up and you can use this project plugin scanner pointed at the project and it would tell you what filters were missing. Now again, this is a thing written by Mick from Edius.net, which we've had for some time. That's jolly useful. Great to have it now in the program that it tells you what's missing. So it's telling me that neat video is missing and it's telling me that this limiter is missing. Brilliant. Just to know what's actually missing. I mean, the fact that it's got a grey bar, it's not immediately obvious, you know, you can tell you've got a brown bar, that means it's got some kind of filter. The grey bar tells you it's got a missing filter, but to know what filter is missing is very useful. Now, this is something that will only work if you're using a project that has been edited in 11.4 or later. So if you open up a project from Edia 6 or 7 or something like that, and yeah, I have opened up projects from Edia 6 into Edia 11 and they've still worked. Doing that, it won't tell you what filter is missing. It'll just tell you there's a dummy filter. You have to have made the project in 11.4 or later, and then it will tell you what's missing. Just the fact that it actually tells you that is great. Another thing we have been asking for ages is to do with presets. So I'm going to take those two and I'm going to make a preset. 
Then I'm going to go to another clip and I'm going to drop that on there and it tells me the name of the preset. So it tells me it's David's Cleanup and it's called Auto Color Correction and also from David's Cleanup Neat Video. Again, a small thing, but actually, yeah, suppose I came to this clip, I might stick a bit of a primary color corrector on there and I'll adjust it so it gives me a look that I like. And then I'll save that with a name. And then I'll come to another clip which is the same person and I'll drop it on there because I want the same effect on every time that person is used. It's nice that you know that you've put the right one on there, that you know you're using the same filter effect between them. Again, small change, it's just nice that you can actually see that there. There are also a huge list of changes which you can see here on the Grass Valley forums. A lot of these do relate to things that have been added back into the bin. Things like these extra buttons and so on. A lot of that refers to those things that have been put back in, but there is a huge list here. But like I said, the ones I really like are things like dummy effects and saving presets and the search marker. There's also this bit down the bottom which says it supports hardware processing of video rendering. So, you know, we've been talking about adding ability to use the graphics card to do more effects work inside of Edius. They've actually improved it. So there's a list here of the sort of things that they added in, like some field order conversions and stuff like that. Slowly they are making more and more things use the graphics card to do work. Of course, to enable it, you've got to come at your system settings and go to hardware and go to video rendering and playback and choose what you want to be your primary graphics card. In my system, I've got a 3060 and I've also got the built-in Intel, so I tend to put the 3060 as the main thing that does most of the work. It will use the Intel to help play stuff back, but the Intel doesn't do much in terms of helping playback effects, but the 3060 will do stuff to help playback effects. So I tend to set it up like that. I've got videos about that and how that relates to these two settings here, which is to do with playback of video. But the new stuff is not to do with playback of video, it's to do with playback of effects added to video. And the more stuff they get the graphics card doing, the better. And there are also some little things like, again, in earlier versions of ADS 11, if you were to take a sequence and rename it up here, which of course I can now do by just clicking on that and going, Again, previous versions, you'd have gone to open up the properties and changed it, but now I can just click up here. If you rename it there, it renames it here. Silly little things like that, which of course it used to do in Edius 10 and previous versions, but now it's doing that. So basically now the bin is as good as it used to be with all the extra stuff, like being able to bring in stuff from sequences inside of Mink and so on that you've got in Edius 11. So I think that's great. Now you might also notice that I have got some extras down here scene detection and stuff like that upscaling this is all to do with the bat server so you won't have that unless you get the bat server as i film this there is a new version of the bat server that is coming out which is adding in some extra stuff so i'll go through that in another video right now i'm just looking at what was new in edius 11.4 what's the simplest way to install it on your system is to have the edius setup manager on there and just run it and get it to check what you've got and update everything the nice thing about the update manager is it will update everything. So it will update Edius along with all the extra plugins and so on. You can get the update by going to help and then saying check for updates or going to download stuff on the Edius website. So this will take you to the bonus plugins where you can get the latest versions of all the extras that come with Edius. But also on Edius World, you can come and find the latest versions of Edius as well if you want to do it one at a time or if for some reason the EDIUS update manager isn't working. You can just come in here and get the installers from there. The setup manager is probably the quickest way of doing stuff. One final thing to mention, if you have a Blackmagic device, there have been some updates for the drivers recently on that. So it's gone from version 14 to version 15. So I put 15.1 onto my system, but I've done that because I like to try out the latest stuff. Don't do it if you've got Edius. Stay on 14.5 for the moment. I mean, Blackmagic have a habit of bringing out lots of updates for their drivers, and a lot of the time they're just updating stuff that isn't to do with Edius, it's to do with other programs. Actually, for using Resolve, I've still been sticking on 14.5. I stuck 15 on here just to see what it's like. And on some systems, I'm not getting sound coming out the analog connections. So I tend to take the sound out of a black magic, pop it into the line in on the computer and listen to it that way. That's not been working for me with the version 15 drivers on some black magic cards. The EDIA setup manager won't prompt you to update it. Just don't bother. Stick on 14.5 for the moment and don't bother to change it. 
because it might cause you problems. We'll find out what happens in the future. Again, that's a black magic thing. The new drivers don't add anything for ADS anyway, so just don't bother. There is a huge list of stuff, but mainly the big thing is changing the bin, making the bin what you're used to if you were working in EDIUS 10 or 9 or 8 or 7, and all being a bit faster and a bit nicer. I was getting on with the EDIUS 11 bin, but things irritated me, like I want to drag a folder in, you'd have to drag it into here, not here. If I had that selected and I wanted to bring in some stuff from here, say, I would drag it in, pop it in there, and it would go underneath this Tiger Safari folder, now I can just do what I used to do, pop it up there and it'll go there as a subplot. Stupid little stuff like that. The bidding was so nice in previous versions, it was why change it? Now obviously they changed it to make it work better with the Chorus Hub and talk better to Mink and all sorts of other things, but it's nice it now works the same as it used to in previous versions. Anyway, hope you found that video useful. Let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, if you've got any questions, contact me, david at dvctraining.co.uk. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video, which is highly likely to be what's new in the BAT server.